Being able to classify forces as conservative or non-conservative helps us to figure out how the force will change potential and kinetic energy of the system, which we can then use to understand quantities such as position and speed. To start off, it's good to define the quantity mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the total kinetic plus potential energy in the system. That's the energy that can be used to provide useful work. There are two broad kinds of forces. Conservative forces, which conserve mechanical energy. By conserve, that means it doesn't change it, it keeps it the same. And non-conservative forces, which don't conserve mechanical energy, they change it. This is done either by dissipating energy thermally, or bringing in energy from outside of the system, or sending energy to outside the system. So exchanging energy with the environment. How can you tell a conservative force from a non-conservative force? One of the main ways is that a conservative force is path independent. The work it does doesn't depend on how you get from one initial position to a final position. It just depends on what the initial and final positions are. So that means that the work is the same along every path. A corollary of that, if you have a closed path that ends up at the same position where it started, then the work done is zero because, of course, the potential energy is the same at the beginning and at the end. Also, the work done by this conservative force is the negative of the potential energy change. So if the potential energy is decreasing, that means the potential is doing work. If the potential is increasing, then something is doing work against the potential. Non-conservative forces, on the other hand, are forces that either exchange energy with the surroundings or that dissipate the energy into forms that can't be used. For instance, friction, viscous drag, internal deformation and collisions. So these three are ways that thermally dissipate energy. Also, external energy input or output 